In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First off, welcome to Church of the Messiah on this uh, very happy occasion, celebrating Lori and Muriel's uh, renewal of their wedding vows, 70 years together. You might think that these were odd uh, scripture choices to have as part of that service, and in fact, I can claim it's not my fault. Uh, like many Anglican churches and uh, Methodist, Lutheran, Roman Catholic, etc., we follow something called the Revised Common Lectionary, which came about many decades ago as a way, first of all, to unify all the churches in the world so that we'd be basically praying with the same texts on any given Sunday, uh, but also as a way to kind of keep us honest as people of the book. That is to say that on any given Sunday, the lessons are presented to us, so we don't have the option of cherry-picking the lessons that validate the things that we believe, but instead are normed by the Bible rather than norming the Bible to fit our expectations. So as a preacher, I have the challenge of making these lessons fit with the glorious occasion of, of this wedding celebration. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to talk about covenant faithfulness, because I believe that's what all these passages from Scripture have in common today. They're all about covenants and what happens when those covenants are broken. These are stories about faithfulness. And I would present to you the idea that the opposite of faithfulness is not perhaps unfaithfulness or betrayal or something like that, but is actually idolatry. That is to say, worshiping something of our own creation, taking the figments of our own imagination, our own projections, and putting them onto another thing and worshiping that or elevating that above even God. In the ancient world, they had lots of elaborate rituals to mark a covenant that had been struck between two parties. This makes sense when you consider that there wasn't as much of a, a sense of an overarching government that could penalize people. You, you couldn't take someone to court if they violated a contract, usually, unless you happen to be very powerful and have your own private army. So instead, people would invoke the power of God to seal their covenants. One way, uh, ancient way to do this was to make an animal sacrifice, and they would split the animal in half and separate the halves, and they'd walk through them, and they would essentially be inviting God to curse them in that way if they might be rent apart like the animal if they violated the terms of the covenant. Wedding vows are a similar kind of a thing, and uh, the wedding vows that these two people made to each other, which I happen to have here in that nice poetic language of the Book of Common Prayer, goes something like this. It's kind of in two parts. And by the way, you guys can answer. <laughs> Lori, wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> Muriel, wilt thou have this man to be thy wedded husband, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as you both shall live. <laughs> and then, after that consent is established, then there are the actual vows themselves, which I'll, I'll read to you guys and you can repeat. This is not the actual renewal of vows, that's coming in a few minutes, but this is kind of a preamble to that, to remind you of what you've already promised me. Uh, so I, Lori, so you and me, I Lori, I'm Lori, take me here to be my wedding wife, to have to hold from the state forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to death do us not, according to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I give thee my troth.
What just happened there? Some would tell you that the institution of marriage is on the decline in Canada. I tell you it's not true. Uh, people will tell you that the divorce rate is 50%. Not true. It's actually been stable at 38% for a number of years. It reached a, a high in the 80s, but has been statistically on the decline ever since then. The fact is that people today, when they're surveyed in marriages, report being happier than they were 50 years ago or 100 years ago. Marriage is not on the decline. It's evolved, it's changed, I grant you all that. Maybe people are more reluctant to enter into marriage until they're confident it's the right match, sure. But marriage is not on the decline. And in their marriage, as in other marriages, we see something of what covenant faithfulness looks like for us as people of the book. People who believe that it's possible to make a vow and to keep it by God's grace. The opposite of that is, of course, idolatry. Which is not so much about uh, just worshiping carved images as it is about taking something which is your own creation and raising it up. And usually that thing is your own projections, your own imagination. What often gets people in trouble in marriage is when they idolatrize things like lust or happiness or the cult of romantic love. The cult of romantic love, by the way, was an uh, invention of the diamond industry and the greeting card industry. Uh, the idea is that out there in the world, there is one right person for you. And when you find that person, you must shower them with expensive gifts so that they will love you and know that you love them. The cult of romantic love gets people into trouble because they imagine that as long as they're with that person, they will be happy. And when the hard times comes, as it inevitably will, when that poor part of the vow comes, when that sickness part of the vow comes, people get a little antsy and they think, this isn't what I signed up for, and they depart. But in a marriage that's lasted 70 years, I have to think that this couple knows something about what it means to weather those hard times. Something of what it means to ignore those false idols that we put up in our minds, to forsake them, to not be tempted by our own fantasies, but instead to remain faithful to the covenant that they made 70 years ago. Think of it, 70 years with another person. Now, I don't know how many of you are married or with a partner, but you might know that within a couple of weeks, days, or perhaps even hours of living with that person, you will discover that they're actually very irritating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what particular things it is about Lori that, that, uh, that annoys Muriel or vice versa, but I can guarantee you there are some of them. In fact, in a recent article about their marriage, uh, I remember them saying that they still get into arguments, they just don't last very long. <laughs> what does that say about human relationships? It says that when we enter into these covenants, whether with each other or with God, inevitably those hard times will come, but they're not just a, an accident, they're actually a feature of being in covenant relationship. Part of being faithful is rubbing up the wrong way against another person. And in that way, those sharp edges that rub start to wear down and become smooth. I bet you the things they argue about now are quite different than they were 70 years ago. I bet they have evolved and grown as human beings. So today on this day when we celebrate them and we, we consider the covenant also that we make with God, I invite you to forsake idols and to remain faithful to the covenants that you have made. No doubt you will exist within a matrix of multiple covenants that you've made, not just with members of your family, people that you may have chosen to be with, but people who have come into your lives accidentally, uh, children or, or maybe coworkers or something like that. You have a covenant with them. And of course I would hope that you also have a covenant with God, a promise that you made of God, to God to be faithful to him and to serve him as best you can. So now as is our, our custom in this church, I'm going to pass around the mic for a few minutes and see if anyone has any comments to make in response to what I've just said.